Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tales from a Professional Nerd. I am Brian C. P. Steele, and I will be your nerd today. Um, you'll note that I've switched the camera angles again uh, because, for whatever reason, um, my window shades are doing nothing to keep out the blinding white day star that has dominated the sky for the last couple days. And so if I'm where I'm normally sitting with the direction that it's normally pointing, um, it's like this, this here is pretty whitewashed because of the window already. Um, but the, the, uh, uh, if I'm the other way, I look like Two-Face from Batman. It's just white. Uh, so I don't, I, I gotta figure out how to, how to make that not quite so insane. Hopefully I'll be able to actually get my shades up and then that'll help a lot, but um, either way, uh, hi, how is everybody doing today? I know you can't answer except in the comments, but you should, you should comment and then like and share and subscribe and hit the bell and all that, all the rest of that stuff. Um, so let's see, let's do the week in Brian real quick before we, uh, get into the nitty gritty of what I want to do today. Um, so, uh, it's been a weird week, um, without getting too in depth into what happened um last weekend was my mom's birthday and my birthday we we are back to back birthdays she's the 15th and i'm the 16th um if you uh want to get me anything for my birthday um my mailing address is in the description of the uh of the video um let's see what else uh yeah so i had a great weekend um played my first game of ninth edition 40k uh, against one of my my best friends and playtesters, um, it was my Necrons versus his uh, uh, Adeptus Mechanicus list, and uh, it was the first time he had ever fielded this list before. You know, so we were both kind of going in on the back foot, and um, my dice, I, I I don't like normally blaming a loss on on dice you know normally it's i've made a mistake here or you know maybe i shouldn't have taken these two units together or, or something like that um but even even chris my opponent um even he had to say your dice are terrible they've abandoned you um you know it between the two of us we had the right sort of statistical probability as i was rolling all of the terrible dice and he was rolling all of the amazing dice so if that gives you a general idea of how the game went, there you go. I don't need to go too deep into it, um, but I believe I texted my friend uh, who also plays Necrons and said, why do we even re-roll dice? <laughs> so it was terrible, um, but it was a fun game. Like So that's I guess that's the thing is that um, I, I don't mind losing a game, even if it's to bad dice, even if it's, you know, so long as I'm not, on, that I'm that I'm not losing the enjoyment from the game. I was with a friend. Um, it, it's you know, we were we were doing the uh, the social distancing things. You know, making sure that we ran on top of each other while we were playing. Uh, and it was just it was just nice to have company over uh, and play a game because I hadn't uh, played 40k in a long time and definitely hadn't played the new ninth edition stuff. Um, and I tried out some new toys and he tried out some new toys and it, we we had a good time even though. Uh, my my dice probabilities were way off and his were off but in the other direction so it was just it was a, it was a learning experience um to say the least uh but then on my birthday itself on that sunday i got to play D, &D with my fam got to play the family D, D game it was a short session but it was a good session uh it was mostly combat they got to fight a bunch of goblin zombies which we coined the term zoblin um so zoblins are zombie zombie goblins uh there you go you can use that if you like zoblin um but the uh we had a good time uh but then late that night uh i had heard uh from uh one of my family members that um my uh, stepfather, who has been in my life as uh, as as a father figure, he's he's basically my dad um, since I was I think nine, so thirty plus years. Um, 
he uh, had suffered some medical uh, medical issues uh, and was in the hospital. Um, you know, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, but that being said, um, he has already uh, made a complete turnaround. Uh, they've got him on the right kind of medication. The doctor, he's doing great, walking, talking, eating food. Yeah, be, other than being apparently pretty tired, uh, he's rip raring and ready to go. Um, and uh, the doc says that you know he needs to you know take some time off, chill out. He's retired anyway, so it's you know other than like working on his farm implements and things, he's he's a he's a very busy guy. Um, and for the next couple of weeks, he needs to not be. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, other than that, he's doing great. Um, I couldn't ask for uh, a better birthday present. Is him getting through this, and uh, I'm trying not to cry on the on camera right now. Um, uh, so he he got through it, and uh, the doctor actually said that this was a good thing that the that this that this happened um, because that it happened while everything was still super minor and extremely manageable. Uh, because if it doesn't, then that's the kind of thing that sneaks up and actually does major damage. So, uh, regardless to any of that, uh, that was, that was, that was good. Um, on top of that, you know, aside, you know, move the family stuff aside, uh, professionally, it's been, it's been great. Um, I, uh, I still can't talk about one of the things that I, that I have signed, but it's going to be cool. Um, when I when I can talk about it more, it's probably gonna be a while. Uh, so I, I probably just I should probably just stop mentioning and stop vaguing at you, so you guys don't go, Brian. What is your deal in the comments? Because you should be commenting, commenting. Um, but uh, I did have a conversation uh, that currently is still one hundred percent just talk. Who knows what it will be. Uh, if anything comes of it, it might, it not, it, it's it literally, this is, uh, someone whispered in my ear, hey, this might be something we can do if we do these, like, three things first. Um, and, uh, if that comes to fruition, you guarantee, I guarantee you guys will know about it as soon as I can talk. Um, because it's big. Uh, if, if it. If it happens, it's the kind of thing where you know I've I've got a lot of amazing stuff on my uh, in my my CV already in my my published biblio, but this is the kind of thing that um, other companies notice. Like it's not even just a a matter of you know the gamers notice or a matter of uh, you know a per, a, pers a perspective you know, client might notice this is the kind of thing that uh if it if it happens um it's it's a it's a name maker and not to try and say that you know hey i want to make a name for myself obviously i do but uh it if if something like if it does if it does hit and it does work um and and we can make it happen um it's a career highlight kind of thing so, if you are the prayer, the praying type, uh, whisper a couple to your deity of choice. If you are not, just hang on to some, you know, throw throw me some good vibes and hope that everything comes together in the next couple of weeks when we find out more. Um, but then, uh, other than that, uh, played. Uh, I got my my Friday night roll twenty D and D game, uh, which was brutal last week. Um, almost a total party kill. Um, we, it was a tough fight to begin with, and then we did everything wrong, and some of our dice rolls were abysmal. So it was, it was, the, the set, the setting was already set, the stage was already set for us to have a tough time with this. And we were probably already going to be crawling out bleeding, uh, you know, crawling out of the sewers bleeding after this fight. Um, but then because of how things, you know, work when the, when the plan you know, hits is introduced to the enemy. Um, we ended up splitting the party badly, uh, and the 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 fact that we do not have a dedicated healer in our group um, really shined 
you know, because you just don't have those extra actions to drink potions and things. It was rough. Um, and uh, many of us were taking death saves, and one of us actually straight up died. Uh, so luckily, luckily in that game, we are still fighting, or we are currently hired out by this kind of, she's sort of a gang leader, crime boss, something, I don't know. She's obviously some kind of, she's kind of, some kind of mover and shaker, so we're going to, at the, this Friday when we play, we're going to go ahead and try and poke her into resurrecting, or maybe even at least reincarnating, um, our, uh, our dead friend, uh, and see what happens. Personally, I hope for reincarnation, uh, because I love the idea of randomly getting a totally different race than your than your character w was before you know like one of those oh i guess now i'm a goblin warlock you know i, I always i always dig that um you know throw in a little bit of that random random fun in a uh, in a role-playing game um but yeah other than that uh, it's just regular work is normal uh m you know pushing forward uh but yeah, nothing, uh, nothing out of the out of the, out of the ordinary for me. Um, just that I wanted to do a fun hobby day uh, today, uh, and uh, oh, before we get into the hobby day, so today, uh, normally I'm wearing an uh, one, the sponsors of the show, the Armor Class Ten uh, apparel. Normally I'm wearing one of their shirts. Today I'm wearing one of my. So my wife is an artist. You, you guys know that. Um, and she does amazing art and she does all, she also does a lot of graphic stuff. She's going to be able to lay out for some of my, my books and things. Um, but one of the things that she has done when the opportunity arises is that she actually, um, uh, has created t-shirts, t-shirt designs, uh, to sell through, I believe it's T-Fury, uh, I believe I, I'll, I'll, I'll put the link to her, to her site in the, in the comments, um, or in the, uh, the description of the video, uh, but um, she's made several uh, T-shirts, but also uh, for the people who want you know, to uh, f be safe and fashionable. She also has masks, uh, the the face covering masks that have some designs on them uh, as well through the through her uh, through her site. But today, I'm actually instead of wearing an Armor Class Ten T-shirt, uh, I am wearing. One of her special Rick and Morty T-shirts, T the her the the T Public or T Fury or wh whichever T company T-shirt company that was doing it had a license to do um, uh, Rick and Morty apparel uh, and allowed outside artists to submit their stuff and so she submitted one of these. This is her weddings are basically funerals with cake. Uh, a quote from the uh, the the. Um, eccentric and effervescent Rick Sanchez. Um, I'm, I'm wearing this today. Uh, I was going to wear, she, she also has done several other t-shirt designs. Uh, she has done a very cool, uh, like mind puppeteer one for the TV show Prodigal Son. Um, that unfortunately the t-shirt that they sent me was the wrong size. Um, and I tried to put it on and I looked like a gamer sausage casing. So, uh, I didn't really feel like being on video looking like a gamer sausage. So, um, but yeah, the, aside from that, that's basically my, my week. Um, and I decided, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of commission painting. I've been doing a lot of writing, a uh, little bit of designing where I can, but, um, when we when Chris and I played our game of 40k and I got into my terrain uh, my terrain storage area I found a few things that I forgot that I had one of which is the limited edition plastic iron throne from let me see if we can get a nice there you go, now you can actually see it a little better um, from the miniature the song of ice and fire miniature game um, and because it is what it is, I thought, I was like, you know what? I generally, for a hobby day, I paint for about 40 minutes. And I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance that I can at least get this to the point where I start adding washes to it. And then it's got to dry overnight, um, or at least for, for a handful of hours. So 
I'm going to go ahead and paint this over in the hobby rig once I get it set up. And uh, then I think shortly after it's dry and sealed and everything, I'm probably going to put it up on eBay and uh, sell it. Um, so maybe if I already have the auction up by the time I render this video, uh, I will put the auction in the notes as well and maybe give you guys an opportunity to win something that you see painted on the show. So either way, uh, that's pretty much it for me is uh, just a lot of a lot of work stuff. Uh, gets got to play some fun games. Um, and then uh, this upcoming weekend, uh, which I will definitely talk about a lot next week, um, is uh, the DC fandom. Um, I am beyond excited for what we're going to get shown on Saturday. Um, for for somebody like me, this is uh, this is like a, a media Christmas. So expect uh, expect me to talk a great deal about it. Uh, next week. In fact, that may actually be the topic is just, you know, let's talk about awesome DC stuff. Um, and I'm sure I'll go on and on and on and on and on and on. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take this sharp and spiky little guy over to the hobby rig and get painting. All right. So here I am at the hobby rig, got everything squared away. Um, we will, uh, go ahead and dive on in because I only, I want to see how much, almost speed painting I can get done on this. Um, it's been a while since I've crash painted anything. Um, so let's, let's just dive on in. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and fix my camera so you can see what I'm working on. If I can get it to do. There we go. All right, awesome. Um, so... Basically, what I got here, I've got my Game of Thrones, or well, uh, Song of Ice and Fire uh, miniatures game. So I already got it primed, so it'll just get through a certain thing. And because I'm going to be using the the base core metallic that I use for my Necrons, I'm going to go ahead and base coat my reanimator while I'm <laughs> while I'm doing this. Uh, I know it's going to waste a couple of minutes, but um, you know. Waste not, want not, you know? So, yeah, uh, let's see. What are we going to talk about? Um, the, uh, oh, because we are just doing base coats today, uh, or I shouldn't say base coats, since we're doing kind of a crash paint, it's not uh, not very detailed, because um, I'm not going to get detailed into on, the, on this cat. Um, well, yeah, I'm not going to use that brush either. I'm going to use one of my other kind of semi-destroyed dry brushes. Um, we're going to do a lot of dry brushing today, and then hopefully, if I get a chance to, we'll get to actually get to inking something as well. Um, or washing, or whatever you want to call it. I always call it inking, because some of the things that I use are inks. Uh, and when doing that process, I treat them, I try to treat them like inks. Uh, even if I know they're not as strong. Sometimes they are. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so uh, let's see. What, what do we want to talk about today? I mean, I'm doing uh, kind of a speed piece here with the with the game of the Song of Ice and Fire piece. Um, I could talk about... Uh, so speed painting in general has always been something that I've enjoyed. Uh, it's never something that, uh, you know, I, I try not to do for like client figures. You know, if it's if it's something that someone's paying me for, I don't want to try and rush through it just because it means I can get it done faster. Um, I might use some speed painting elements in it, like trying to get the base coats done or get them all done at the same time. So if I had to like mix my own paint, um, make sure that I use the, that I got to use the same hue, um, you know, that, that, that way they're all the same because there's nothing wrong. There's nothing worse than if somebody's paying you to do like 30 figures of the same kind 
that you go in and you know mix up and you, you do them in lots of 10 and all you know this 10 is of a different shade of the uniform than this 10 is a different shade of the uniform than the last 10 um it's it, i mean again some people could say well you know real real life the dye wouldn't all be exactly the same and you know they there might be some variations based off of weathering and, and that sort of thing but if that's the case, then I would prefer to do that weathering and stuff myself. You know, m m add the, uh, the 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 variations, do it on my own. Um, you know, choose to add that stuff rather than have it be a, a byproduct of me not mixing the same color exactly the same, you know, twice or anything like that. Um, but... Uh, What's I going with this? Oh, yeah. So I mean, I might use some speed painting techniques in that in that situation where it's like, okay, if I want the uniforms to all be the same, and I've got to mix the color, I'm going to do all thirty of them at the same time. Um, maybe not all thirty of them detail wise. Like I might not finish them all at the same time, but I'm at least going to base coat them all, and you know, maybe do like the first level of dry brush or the first ink or something along those lines just so I know that they're all roughly the same shade uh, before I go on to the next, you know, the, the next part of the process. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've been in a couple of speed painting competitions um, where they give you, you know, they, they give you a set of brushes, they give you, the, everybody gets the same figure, uh, and, you know, you get like the most baseline version of paints ever, uh, the one that I, I went to that was sponsored by Reaper a long time ago, it was, eight, it was ages ago, um, we all got Reaper paints, which was awesome because, uh, you know, their their paint quality was really good. You know, we had the same kind of brushes and the same kind of paints that you get in their starter sets. So it was it was really kind of a, uh, you know, you were speed painting, but you weren't, you weren't sacrificing uh, the quality of the materials just because you're slapping it on the model as fast as you can, that kind of thing. Uh, but most speed painting things that I've been to, they give you, here are your like six primary colors. If you want to do anything that's not one of these colors, mix it yourself. They're the most bland, flat, acrylic, you know, the, the crap you buy at a, like, not even at a hobby store. Like, you, you know, you get... You know, the, you get it for like kindergartners to finger paint with. Like it, it's awful, and the reason for it is because you know they know you're wait. You, they, they know you're going to waste it. They know that you're going to you know spill it and blob it on, and you know they're they're getting it for you know they're they're buying it in bulk because they know that they're going to go through a ton of it over the course of a of a convention, multiple speed painting competitions, you know that kind of thing. Um, the brushes are always substandard. And, you know, like, it's just, it, it's just, it, you know, part of the, part of the charm of what you're doing is that you're not, you're out of your comfort zone. You're not using the, the, the best brushes that you've got. You're not using the best materials that you have at your, you know, dis, disposal. You, you may or may not even have any inks at all. You may need to mix your own if that's the case, if that's what you want to do. Um, you know, if you want to use any of these sorts of things, Guess, guess what's guess who's coming up with it? You are, uh, and they don't want, you know, they would they would much rather have everybody on an even keel, so they just don't they just don't have it at the table. You know, they, they, you just don't get to use that sort of thing. They don't want the professional who's got the sixty dollar brushes to be able to do a better speed paint because he brought his brushes and like whips them out of his pocket that sort of thing. So everybody has to use the same materials. Everybody has to use the same. Uh, you know, the same model, the same paint, so you're on as absolutely even footing as you possibly can get. And then they're like, all right, you got an hour, go. Or, hey, you got a half an hour, or whatever whatever the case may be. You know, and then you're like, go get it done. Get as much of it done as you can. And it is, it is a lot of fun to, you know, because, again, you're not doing it for, this isn't a model that you want to, bring home and add to your army. You know, this isn't a model that for your for your favorite D&D &D character to stand on a map. This is a model for you to put in your case and go, I want a speed painting competition to Origins. Or, 
uh, I took second place in the speed paint against some of the best professionals that I've ever seen. You know, like it's it it is what it is, and you don't expect it to be a masterpiece. Um, I've seen some really good speed painting. You know, people who people who you really focus on it on on their everyday paint jobs where they're they're much rather you know get it done fast than get it done perfect. Which is not to say that it's a bad a bad thing. If your if your model comes out looking good, especially at like arm's length or on the tabletop, psh, be paid away. Uh, one of my close friends, uh, he prides himself on how fast he paints. Um, for a while there, I haven't heard him do it in a while, but for a while there, he would every time you t- you know talk about a paint job, you know you'd, you'd say, "Man, that's a really cool paint job," or you know, "Oh God, your imperial fists look really good." the first thing out of his mouth is he'd tell you how long it took him to paint them. You know, oh, I got most of those guys done in about 20 minutes each. You know, like, like it was just, it was a matter of pride for him that he not only painted well, because he, 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 now, if he took his time, he did better. Uh, he was a very skilled painter, still is, I would assume. Um, I haven't seen anything he's painted in a while, uh, but it was, you know, he, he, won some definitely won some awards for his stuff and uh you know but it's just for a while there everything that he painted he would tell you oh this this only took me 20 minutes or that's that was only a 40 minute paint job or whatever all right you're good in base coded i can put you away for now um you know that was that was like what he what what drove him was how fast can i get something done to tabletop standards and uh I, I do believe, um, I, I don't know if he watches the show or not, I think he does, uh, I do believe that he his collective paint jobs did suffer when he was like, I want to go fast, 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 fast. Um, you know, the faster he went, the more that they suffered. But again, ow, man, this thing is spiky. Um, the, the more, you know, the... He, the more of a, of a particular figure he was going to paint, the faster he was going to go. And while the end results may not have been as good as when he took his time, he still looked good, you know. Uh, he, he would always make sure to go back and, you know, fix any major errors or anything, like, oh, man, this guy's got serious googly eyes or anything like that. Um but it was uh, it was it was it was it was it was a solid thing. Oh, I have got to take a phone call real quick. Let's pause and be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry about that. Um, my, uh, my 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 car is in the shop, and I had to take that phone call. Uh, you know, I could cleverly edit this out, but in reality, you know, life cannot. This is really. You know, sometimes you just got to keep on moving on. So, yeah, so basically what I'm doing here with this, uh, this man, he's super spiky. Um, I picked up a second time and did the same thing I did the first time. Jab my finger in the sword parts, which is all sword parts. Um, so this, uh, you're probably wondering if you are only someone who watches the, watches the Game of Thrones TV show and you haven't read the the books, or if you have read the books and you, ha- and you have like a different image in your head because of what's, what's on the TV show um, that was on the HBO show, is that this, uh, this game, of th- this Iron Throne is enormous, that it's, it's huge, it's, it's massive. Well, George R. R. Martin, actually, he wanted them to use a more, uh, th- this is, this is the, the style of the throne for, from the books, like what, what, how he describes, you know, thousands of uh, or hundreds of, of swords of the the people who rebelled against the Mad King. Um, that these, you know, these are his the fused together well, like molten swords, and then it was this mountain in which that he sat and rained rained down upon his, you know, his court. Well, apparently, the the rumor slash uh, you know the the word on the street 
is that George wanted HBO to have this kind of throne. He wanted the, the this kind of throne. But the problem is, is that there are so many scenes in the throne room, like iconic scenes where someone sitting on the throne is talking and dealing with people that are on, that would be on like the, the ground level that it would have to be such a drawn out shot or such a weird, you know, back and forth from the face to the people, from the face to the people, uh, that it just, a, pro, a, a, a setting piece like this just really wouldn't work for, for a TV show. You know, it's, it works for a, a book because you can see it in your mind's eye. It obviously works for a statue because you can look at it, but for like something where you're seeing it in real time, you know, could you imagine little Joffrey sitting on this thing, talking to his, you know, uh, his people? It would have been so many panned uh, uh, camera angles and, you know, or, you know, to get the whole thing in frame, it would have to be in, just immense and drawn so far back that it just, it wouldn't work out. So they went ahead and made basically the throne just the, top part you know just the just the 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 actual seat itself not the rest of the mountain that it sits on um and that's you know that's that's pretty cool i just there is a part of me that wishes that we could have at least seen it you know once as 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 imagined how george wanted it but either way you know it was it's a great show up until the end uh Last season was god awful, um, but uh, while we're talking about things that things that George wanted, uh, the game, the actual miniatures game, the Song of Ice of Fire miniatures game, um, is 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 solid. You know, I, I have a Free Folk army. Um, I had originally, while I was still at Simon, uh, I had designed. A preliminary list to how to do the Greyjoys. Um, although now seeing the rules that they put out, it does not look like they use my rules, um, which is fine. You know, designers designers rarely want to use someone else's stuff. They would much rather you know use their own ideas and their own concepts and you know get have the have the kind of credit in their head of oh yeah, this is the stuff that I made rather than using someone else's ideas and, and things. I get it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I enjoy the game a great deal. I think like like most people and like like most gamers and definitely like most game designers, um, anytime that I play a game, one of the first things that, you know, the, some of the first thoughts that roll through my brain are, how would I make this better? What would I change to make this play more the way I want it to play or the way I think people would want it to play? Um, the difference with Song of Ice and Fire is I was actually part of that initial process of playtesting some of these rules, uh, you know, some of the initial... Uh, the initial stuff that was being laid down when Michael was coming up with the the original game, um, I was I was part of that. I got to play some of the original stuff, and so there's a, there's a little there is a little part of me that some of those rules that I think would make that, that, that would just add a little bit more tactical flexibility and less board gameyism um, to the game. But, oh well, you know, it is what it is. The game is what it is. It's fun. I still play it. Um, I enjoy it. I can't wait to get eventually get my hands on my uh, the, the War Mammoths they just teased. Uh, or they just previewed. Um, it's not a game that I paint, though. Uh, for whatever reason, I just... it Again, maybe it's because it, it, it feels so board gamey um, that I, I just don't... Uh, I don't feel the need to paint them. You know, the factions are all color-coded, so there's no question whose models are whose. And, uh, you know, we don't have a, a huge following here around me, so it's not like I have to worry about my free folk being confused with someone else's free folk. 
I don't know. I I know I would like to paint paint some more. I know I, I painted a couple of giants and then sold them and then got new ones. Um, but that was what I was kind of hard up on money in between commissions. I was like, oh, I better sell my giants off. Uh, I don't know why Mickey Mouse was the one that was letting me sell my giants, but that's that's how it is. Uh, yeah, so. It's a fun game, and if you haven't gotten, if you if you haven't had a chance to, to give it a try, do so. Um, I know it is difficult right now to get starter sets uh, unless it's like I think there's like one like like Night's Watch is like the one you can you can't get or something. I don't know. Again, I don't know the specifics. One of my friends was telling me about it. He owns a game store, and he was lamenting about how difficult it was to try and maintain stock of the of the Song of Ice and Fire game uh, because of Simon st- stocking issues or, or whatnot. Uh, but either way, if you get a chance to play it, you should. Um, just make sure... I, I do know that in the, the competitive scene, uh, there's a handful of... Uh, a handful of army types that people have been fielding that are very frustrating to play against. If this is, if it's your first game, or if you're just a, pl- a fun player and you're having, trying to, you want to have a good time and really just kind of feel how the game works. Make sure that you're playing against a fun opponent and not somebody who's like, "I'm going to bring the the toughest thing I can. And here's all the cheap shots that I can take, and you know, yeah, you you lost in turn two, you know, or whatever." Just that's my. That's that's my interpretation. All right, so we've done the base dry brush of the just the ma- the main steel of the swords, um, and I know right now it looks very monotone uh, because well it is. Um, I am going to rinse out my brush, and then we're gonna, what we're going to do is I'm going to take a smaller brush, and I am going to add in a handful of shinier swords here and there. Um, not many, but enough that it will kind of speckle out a little bit, so it has some some pinpricks of lighter color. Uh, and then, when that is done, I'm going to go in with some different golds, gold colors, gold and bronzes and things. And because there are a lot of hilts, there are a lot of uh, hilts and handles through here. Um, I'm going to, uh, with a much smaller brush, I'm going to go through and paint the um, a bunch of these hilts and handles so it'll have a whole lot of color that'll pop out. And then after those, when I'm done with those, then the whole thing is going to get a Nuln Oil from Citadel uh, Wash. Uh, and then I'm going to do some spot sepia and earth shade washes to show just a little bit of rust, maybe down around, especially down around the bottom, um, just to show a little bit of uh, uh, wear and tear on these things. I think that that'll be that'll be cool. But yeah, see, basically what I'm doing here uh, is just grabbing the occasional sword and going to highlight, not even highlight, just sort of, because it's going to come up as a different color. I want a little bit of shade variation in the metal. Um, Not much, not a lot. Like, it's it's just going to grab occasion. And because the way this thing is put together, I can kind of slop it in uh, because the swords overlap in a big way, and here's a point, and there's a point, and, uh, you know, this one bends around because it's melted. You know, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on, and once I, uh, once I ink it, a lot of the rough edges on some of these swords that are getting silvered right now uh, will end up filling in with dark anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it being too uh, uh, sloppy on some of those things. So I, now the stairs, however, the, the stairs made of blades, um, I got to try not to 
make it look striped because that's that, that would look really silly. So we're going to do two or three in one section and skip a few and then do another one here and skip a few because again it, it isn't like the when they constructed this thing that it you know they're like make sure you interspace the silver swords from the the steel swords or the you know the the, the heavily tarnished swords let's have to make sure those are every other you know they, they didn't do that they just sort of slapped them together and then made a big chair of it there you go uh, but it hopefully it will still give some depth and variation to the this model which is funny this model even exists because the only place the iron throne exists on the board is on a basically this tiny little uh oh falling out of falling out of frame um this tiny little uh uh square on the the tactics board this thing's way bigger than that so i think maybe it was supposed to get used for whose turn it is or who's go who at first this 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 game turn or there's a lot of different things that it could possibly represent um but either way it's a cool piece of terrain to have and i think that people could probably either turn into a really sweet diorama or if you're feeling super froggy you could probably maybe even kit bash it into something else to be as part of like a 40k model or or another you know maybe oh uh, or if you had, like this would be cool if you mounted it to a, a like a big block of wood like lacquered wood and use it as like a tournament uh like a tournament not objective but uh trophy you know the, i'm sure someone would love to get a you know a, a iron throne trophy you know best general or whatever so if that's the case, make sure you go to my eBay and try and pick this up once it's a, a done deal. But yeah, uh, I, I, I get to go back to what I was talking about. I enjoy the game a great deal. Um, I've kind of fallen out of it. Some of it is because the cold quarantine. I haven't had anybody over to play games aside from that last game of 40K in quite a while. So that, that put a bit of a damper in this. And then the other the other issue is uh, you know not to not to try and throw my former employee uh, my my former my former employers under the bus, but uh, Simon has had a very difficult time keeping the boxes that everybody wants for this game in stores. Um, they you know, I don't know if they're just like not selling to the right distro or they're not making enough of a particular product like they're not thinking it through. Or whatever but there are units that I was only able to get one of that I would love to have two uh, I still haven't seen my second uh, character box yet um, it's just it's just I think it's a a missed opportunity that the that they could be s just slamming stuff out for this game and it could have really give like Age of Sigmar or something like that a run for its money uh, if it was a little more board game and a little less, uh, a, a little less board game and, and gotcha NPC tactics, but what are you gonna do? That's right, nothing except paint models and have fun. Uh, but I do, I, I, I you know, I, I reiterated this a couple times. I do still love, I still enjoy the game a great deal. You know, like it's. It's not a matter of, uh, you know, oh, geez, you know, you're not at Seaman anymore, so you you might as well just throw in the towel when it comes to these games. That's not true at all. Uh, you know, I I am very I'm excited about, you know, it's a bittersweet excitement because I wasn't on the project, but I'm excited about their upcoming Masters of the Universe game. You know, I'm a big He-Man Masters junkie. <sighs> not as much as uh, Transformers, but still you know it's it's it was a big deal for me when i was little and i'm i'm looking forward hopefully to 
getting a chance to play you know play that game and this is kind of the same the same deal is i enjoy this world i loved the books and i i really want this game to continue to go well so eventually i can get some of the units that I, I know should be in the game. Now, that being said, they also recently announced some Juvenile Dragons, which I personally, I, I'm going to say this straight away, people can quote me on it, I think it's a mistake. I know people like dragons, and they're like, oh, you want dragons? Dragons are amazing! But I think in a game as kind of simplistic as it is, the only way to do dragons right is to make them overpowerful. And I think that that's going to end up being a major, either a major factor in in games being played, or it's going to be a major factor as to why people stop playing the game because someone in their group gets the dragons and uses them every time. Blah 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 blah. So I don't know. I think I think adding the dragons, especially this early in the quote unquote story, is a mistake. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. You know, maybe I'm totally wrong. And reading their stats and what they can do, um, maybe I am exaggerating. And I don't mean to be, but it's possible. Wouldn't be the first time that I was wrong. Definitely won't be the last. Um, let's see. What else? What else we want to talk about while we're painting stuff? Uh, I'm excited about getting to paint some new Necron stuff and I base code that reanimator. And although right now the current rules for the reanimator are kind of bad because we know that reanimation protocols is being rewritten for the codex in August or October, sorry, it is August. Um, we don't know what it's going to do. And so right now I'm, I'm painting it because it's a cool model. <laughs> Like that's that's primarily what I want to do. I just want to make it's a it's a neat model, um, but I also think there's no way that it's going to just be bad. You know, like they they've created this new idea, this new rule, this new style of dude, and then they're going to make it bad. Nah, there's no way. Uh, so I expect that it's going to be when they revamp the rules, suddenly this critter is going to come into its own, and I want to have one of the first painted ones on the block, in my opinion. It'd be fun in my neck of the woods. Um, yeah, because right now, it has the, the its reanimation beams allow you to reroll ones for one unit within nine inches, um, and that's meh. You know, it's not, it, you're obviously not going to use it on warriors because right now warriors already we roll ones. That's just that's just you know silly talk. Now if the if the beams let you re-roll all failures, that'd be a different story. It'd be cool, but re-rolling ones just it's going to do the same thing. I'm looking forward to finding out what the new what the new rules are. You know what the what the new reanimation protocols are. What's you know he, they're talking about how there's going to be a couple new dynasties. You know I'd love to see what the new dynasty traits are for for my net crowns. Um, but we're getting close. We're getting close. It's uh, October is the release date on it, so we'll start seeing some more previews probably in September. Start getting some more leaks. You know Jane, for whatever reason, Game Workshop is really bad about inform information leaks. Although I do believe that some of them are on purpose to try and get people talking. Um, but either way, uh, I, I'm, I'm October. I'm sure. I'm sure at some point October will come around. I'll get the new book. We'll get to talk about stuff, and then I'll probably have it just like you know I did before, where it was just about the models. I'll probably do a uh, uh, check out this you know, the, these new Necrons kind of review of the book. And we'll see. We'll see what they what they give to us, how cool it is. Right, almost done with the random highlighted swords. 
And when that's done, we'll go start. We'll start on one of the colors of the hills. Like I said, I'm, I'm going a little bit over on where time-wise for a speed paint, but I think I think you guys are going to get a good eyeball full of what the uh, the final product will actually look like. And then hopefully, if somebody out there is like, I play Song of Ice and Fire, or I like that little model, I want it. Uh, you guys will hop on eBay and, and get it from me. Because Lord knows I could always use the cash. But also, this little guy needs a home. You know, he needs to go, go to somebody who, uh, go to somebody who will love him. Just like eventually when I get some, you know, some models for the, uh, the new Warzone game, when we start getting some production, you know, some production masters and things, I will probably paint a few of those. And unless they match to one of the forces that I like to play, there we go, that's cool. Um, I will probably put those on eBay as well. Or maybe do like a giveaway for like the person who has the coolest poem or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm, what I'm going to do with that. But regardless, it will be a good time will be had by all. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a spiky, fun, spiky, fun model. Um spiky fun that needs to be like on the, for the front of the box yeah hopefully uh you guys will get a chance to oh, no man down man down camera down nothing broke let's fix that Ugh. sorry guys and, uh, that was Unexpected. I did not. The, the world, the world imploded, but nothing broke. Nothing got damaged, as far as I can tell. I think we're good. I think we're good. So that was crazy. I was not expecting that. Sorry about that. Eventually, I will have uh, enough. Enough money invested where the... Because right now my hobby rig is basically two of my webcams I move over from my other uh, from my other computer to here. And I set them up. Eventually I will have like fancy webcams that are like bolted in and they're always here and I just basically got to plug them in. That'll be fun. But until then, we got to deal with the occasional... Uh, gravity, gravity mishap, as just noted. So, yeah, so now I'm just going to go through and kind of gold a few of the hilts, a couple of the pommel boxes. Again, the whole point is just to give it a little, a little more pop, a little more Hey, that's realistic. That's not just a slab of plastic. That's what we're doing here. Because, and I don't want to do all of them the same color because then it runs into the same issue. It's like, oh, okay, that's, you're just sort of globbing, globbing paint in a particular location. And we don't want that. We want realistic or semi-realistic swords poking out of the where where the the mad king once sat and then later on the child king and then Cersei and then ugh, craziness uh, but either way this is going to be a fun piece for people to have because that's what I want to do I want to make sure that you guys have cool stuff as you should because cool stuff is cool all right and that one i'll do a different color all right just got to pick out a few along things 
you know, and, and again, I don't want to do too many in this color because that means it's going to, it, it's going to drown out the other colors. And predominantly, this thing needs to stay on the shiny side. You know, it needs to stay gold and, or silver and steel more than anything because that's the, that's what the, 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 the thing was made of. <laughs> it, was, it was made from, uh, you know, hundreds of swords. So the goal is to keep it looking like it's made from hundreds of swords. And so we'll just do a couple of hilts here and there, but nothing, nothing super dramatic, no like giant section aside from the throne itself. And that way the throne itself will have a little bit of a, uh, it'll seem a little more regal from the front. But you know how it goes. You don't want you don't want a nice centerpiece like this or bookend or paperweight or desk piece. You know, I could I could see someone buying this if they're a big fan of the show or a big fan of the books buying this and put it on the, putting it on their desk at work. I could totally see that. You know, sitting there being all stabby pokey. Because it is very stabby pokey, I might add yet again. Because now that I can't really put my fingers underneath it, I just have to deal with the fact that I'm getting poked. Um, man, there's not very many on that on that side. Always makes you wonder if the sculptor either decided like you know, specifically was like no this is the you know this side is going to be the bigger side or if it's just they got tired of sculpting the little tiny the little tiny hilts and they're like nah let's just, <laughs> let's, just let's just make it a uh uh all swords on that side but I'm hoping that I'm hoping that this goes to a nice home. That either it's a somebody who plays the game or someone who's just a real big fan. Because I oh stick my finger in one of the gold ones. I should do this. Um Because I think that that's, uh, you know, I, I'm putting a little bit of labor into this. And while I don't expect to get, you know, a fortune for it or anything like that, I do hope that I'll be at least adequately compensated for it through eBay. And that the end result is that, is that it goes to someone who can then show their friends and go... Uh, check this out. Super happy. Look at what I want on eBay. Something like that. There are a lot of hilts in this back part here. Which is fine. It's fine. It should be pretty well decorated. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. This weekend is going to... That, that DC fandom, I know a lot of people wrongfully give the DC movies, or at least some of them, a lot of grief. Uh, and I, while I disagree with them vehemently, 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 um, you know, it, it is their, it's their, their opinion and it's their right to have it. I cannot wait to see the various like teasers and things. Cause you know we're going to get a bunch. We're going to get a bunch of little clips of movies. Uh, I, I'm excited. I know we're supposed to get the first footage, the first test footage from um, the new Suicide Squad from James Gunn. 
Uh, yeah, no, I am pumped, and if you're even remotely a DC fan, you should be pumped too. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's basically what I'm spending most of my Saturday doing. I'll, I'll be doing some work at the same time, but for the most part, it is just me plugged in and watching uh, watching fandom on Saturday. Uh, one of my buddies was like, hey, we should play a game 40K. I was like, nope, I am going to be lashed to a screen pretty much all day. And I cannot... I can't think of, you know, very little that would pull me away from that. Oh, this is gonna be so. It's gonna be so good. And like I said, I, I hope to be able to do some decent reviewing and tell you guys about it next week because I think that you will hopefully enjoy what I have to say about it. I hope. I hope. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um. Let's see how I'm getting I'm starting to get close on time. I really wanted to get this to the point where I could wash it. You know what? Do you guys mind if we go over? No uh no refusals. Okay. That's right. I just asked you guys a question that you can't answer and then took took it as the answer I wanted. I'm gonna make this happen because I want to be able to throw ink down on this thing. Get that null oil rocking. Make this into a, a fancy, fancy speed paint. And hopefully, it will turn out oh, amazing. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm sure there will still be someone out there that's like, I want a painted throne. And they'll get it in some fashion. That's what I think anyway. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Alright. Starting to run out of hilts, which is a good thing. That's what I wanted. I want the hilts themselves to not be the dominant feature, but it is going to be, when the ink comes through, it's going to definitely uh, dull a bunch of them down. Which is fine. It's fine. Okay. Ow. Spiky. But yeah, so this is like I said. I'm not. I'm not trying to be too careful because I know the ink is going to take a lot of the rough edges away. So I'm not. I'm not trying to be meticulous. And you know, not not just that. Not to mention that the actual model itself has a lot of rough edges and swords that have, you know, bends in them and blunt edges. and There's a lot of that, too. So, uh, because that's there, I am less, less inclined to uh, freak out if I didn't color in the lines, so to speak. Uh, because I know that barring some major restructuring and, cl and massive like file cleaning um, this monster I'll show you too da -da -da, the throne the iron throne alright now because I don't want to get mold oil all over my person I got more work to do over the keyboard, and I do not want to get it all over me. I am going to mount this on my primer board, my primer box. 
and we're gonna wash it that way. Oh, and I get to use the patented, it's not really patented, but the uh, Games Workshop style from Steve Makes Paint Pot Bunker that I had showed off a couple weeks ago. But I'm actually going to get to show you how it works because I need to use it. So it keeps that lid back there, keeps it behind these two posts. So I can't, I can't knock this over. I would have to, I would have to really pummel this thing in order to uh, to knock it over. Uh, but I am not gonna because I don't need to. I am. Just washing, and it's just and and in the case of this, because it is all metal, it's all needing these sorts of shades. I am just it is just a bath. I'm just giving this thing a null oil bath, and I am aware that some of the some of the the hilt color, some of that gold sparkle. Oh, that's a hair. Some of that gold sparkle is running down into the into the ink because there's a few of the hilts aren't completely cured yet. I understand, and I'm actually okay with that. Uh, because in this case, you got to remember that these swords were, in fact, melted together uh, to form the throne. And so if, because of that, I'm fine with a little bit of that metal color running because some of those hilts probably, your gold has got a very low melting point. Um, and I am on board with the idea that some of those swords melted together. I mean, they, did, they obviously did, otherwise this thing wouldn't exist. Um, but, like, some of the gold parts of the swords molten, you know, m melted down into the various crevices and the like. Oh, yeah, this is already turning out cool. I'll get it, I'll get it turned around for you here in a second, but... Yeah, this is cool. And then what I'm going to do before the null oil is even dry, uh, I'm going to let it get a little tacky so it doesn't completely run together. Um, but then I am going to uh, add just a few places, uh, some large running drops, some swaths of uh, uh, earth... Uh, earth tone wash because and maybe some armor wash from secret weapon because that's a good one too looks very oily uh, because some of this stuff is not quite tarnishy enough for me in my opinion um, but we'll see we'll see uh, again this is I'm, I'm putting on a lot of this wash you guys are probably watching me going oh my god you're wasting so much null oil uh, I bought a lot I, I might as well just have stock in null oil uh, because of my Necrons and a lot of commissions that are metallic and base, I, I do a lot of I do a lot of null oil. I won't say that it's like the catch-all be-all, but it is definitely one of those colors that, um, when it came out, it used to be it used to be called Armor Wash um, from Citadel ages ago, and then the new. Uh, the new line came out where they started naming things like the different kinds of naming conventions um, or it was named after like stuff in the Games Workshop universe um, and Null is a thing from Age of Sigmar slash Warhammer it's a city of engineers black powder a lot of greasy metal a little oily metal um, and so I started using this, and whereas the old one was more gray, armor armor wash was more of a like a kind of a black gray. This null oil is more of a also brown black, um, like it's got just a little bit of a shade to it of that oily brown, um, which is cool, uh, and that's definitely something. It is definitely something that. Uh, uh, brings out a little bit more out of certain metals uh, which I am using right now. It's bringing out a lot of these metals. Um, 
excuse me, Steve makes paint pot. Um, but yeah, so I am so happy with how this is turning out. As soon as I as soon as I pulled it up out of the uh, out of the terrain box, or because my I've got a basically a, a hollow bench filled with all of my 40k and, and Dark Age and all that all that terrain. Um, as soon as that came undone, I saw it. I was like, "Oh man, I forgot I needed to paint this." And sure enough, you know, here it is. I need to make sure that I am doing the thing. You keep seeing me going back over here, is because it's pooling a lot down at the bottom because I'm putting on so oh, so much. Because of that, I'm using the pools to actually help kind of keep my brush from running out of running out of stiff. Because if I don't have to open a new bottle of anol oil today, I won't. But yes, yeah, so this was this this is fun. You know, I know that I'm going over on time. You guys are bearing with me, but super excited for this. All right, so I've got the whole thing bathed in. Null oil. I used a lot of my null oil, which is fine. Again, so we're gonna put that over here. Pick up the other steam paint pot. Change my brushes so I don't contaminate the contaminate the the stuff. And on this one, I'm just gonna do a few drips here and there. You know, I'm just just gonna add a few spots. Definitely up and down the stairs because this is where people would be tracking a lot of stuff, a lot of dirt, as they walk up and sit on the throne with their dirty royal butts. I'm just going to kind of sporadically drop that through here. To give it a little more, a little more realism because metal doesn't tarnish that way. Doesn't oh, doesn't tarnish evenly. All right. Super excited. I'm super excited. All right. So turn it around. Got a couple more on the back sides, a couple more little splashes. Let it run down into the rest of this. That's all I think I want to do for the browns. I don't want to go too much because then it's going to lose the uh, the oily factor. It'll just look dirty. I don't want it to look dirty. I want it to look sooty and sooty and oily. And then the last, so secret weapon armor wash. I'm going to do just a couple of couple of splashes of that here and there, and then it's just a matter of letting it. Uh, Letting it dry for quite a bit, and then I will seal it with my favorite sealer, the Lucky Varnish from MIG, which unfortunately, the only place I can buy it now, because my local store no longer carries it, um, the only place I can buy it now is online. So I buy it in bulk. <laughs> I buy six or seven bottles at a time. Um, Again, because my local store doesn't carry it anymore, I have to make sure that I do not run out because I love it. Uh, armor wash is so good. The secret weapon armor wash. It's very dense, so it kind of runs really fast down into the the cracks and crevices, sometimes where I want it, sometimes I don't, so i got to be real careful with it. Um, luckily for this project right now, 
I don't have to be careful with anything because it's just sort of we're, we're kind of globbing things on on purpose um, because of the whole speed paint factor. But yeah, that's cool. Oh man, this is cool. God, if it doesn't sell, I might just keep it. Um, I mean, obviously, if it doesn't sell, I am keeping it because it hadn't sold. But yeah, all right. So I think, I think, you know, one or two more little brushes on some of the spots that are a little too monotone for me. And then. Let me just wait for it to dry. Awesome. I'm going to kind of point it to you. I know it's very inky at the moment, so I don't want to get too crazy. But, so there we go. Speed painted in roughly a little under an hour is the uh, Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones Iron Throne. Oh, I've got a bunch of ink on my finger. I was about to touch my computer. That's no good. All right. Let's go back to this. So there you have it. Uh, relatively speed paint. Um, not like massive speed paint, but a relative speed paint of the uh, the Iron Throne. Um, I hope, uh, I mean, I didn't really do a lot of learning chats. This was more of just a uh, rough, rough cut of what I was doing. Um, but I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the chat, and uh, I'll make sure to throw the eBay auction up into the uh, the things. So maybe you guys can actually win this particular kit. Um, aside from that, we'll uh, we'll see you over at the other hobby uh, or at the other hobby rig. This is the only hobby rig. Uh, we'll see you over at the computer in just a few. All right, everybody. That was super fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what you uh, what you got to watch. And uh, like I said, uh, watch eBay if you want the uh, the Iron Throne for yourself uh, as painted here on the show. Um, and uh, I don't know what else to say other than what I normally do, and that's uh, you know stay safe. Make sure you wear a mask while you're out and about. Uh, maybe even one bought at Natalie's website. Um, and uh, just make sure that you're trying to add some positivity in a relatively scary and negative world right now. Um, be safe, have fun, and play some games. We'll see you next week.